morning and uh, welcome to what is an inspiring campus uh, today. Welcome to historic uh, Oakland, University of Pittsburgh, the Pete, uh, home to our Panthers basketball team and uh, welcome to Al. Um, today is, I think, especially inspiring for us because it really signals and begins what is a new chapter in Pitt Athletics. Follows a storied history. During the last week, we've heard much regarding Alan Green. Uh, those around the country, esteemed coaches, athletic executives, have used words like innovative, transformative, passionate, unwavering to describe Alan Green. Today, I simply like to say uh, to you, Alan, and to your family from the Board of Trustees, we welcome you. You are soon to join not only a Pitt community, but the community of Pittsburgh. And you will soon learn in that journey that uh, you will now be a member of a community that uh, I would argue is the best, finest sports city in America. So welcome to that. Before we begin, there are a few thanks that need to be expressed. First and foremost, um, we need to thank the Search Advisory Committee. The Chancellor worked to put together a group of individuals that did an absolutely tremendous job. Uh, from our distinguished alumnus, uh, Aaron Donald, to our board being represented ably through Pete Ferrisketti, um, and many others, Coach Cavill, et cetera. The committee did a very, very thorough, um, comprehensive job, um, and I think the, uh, the results speak for themselves. But there's one other person that deserves our gratitude and thanks today. And uh, it reminds me that only 15 months ago, we had a very similar day with her. And uh, that is our Chancellor, uh, Joan Gay. Joan has led this effort ably. Um, some have remarked in terms of the time that it took. I can simply tell you, um, it is what we have come to uh, become familiar with in terms of work, working with Joan. She does much quickly well. And Joan, we thank you for your leadership here. And uh, it's now my pleasure um, to call you to the dais uh, for the next part of our program. Chancellor Gable. along the way. And before I get to the introduction of our exciting new director of athletics, I also want to take a moment to add thanks for just a few people who were instrumental. I want to join the uh, chair of our board and add my thanks to the incredible members of the search advisory committee. Pat Fostick, Coach Capel, Aaron Donald, Shayla, Velez, Martinez, Dwayne Pinkney, Donna Samp and Pete Garasteddy. Their advice was instrumental, as well as our broader shared governance community. So many people chimed in to help us define what we were looking for and our next director in serving as advisors to me throughout the search process and to help us make sure we were able to offer a warm welcome to our next AD and their family. And I also want to thank Jen Tisano who stepped up superbly as our next inter and served as our interim director of athletics over the past six weeks but of course has been serving this department for decades and I think we should offer her a round of applause for her. I also want to thank our entire department of athletics staff, coaches, and especially I want to center our student athletes as well as our generous supporters and fans who have been patient as we have conducted a national search to identify our next leader. And I want to thank all of you who made the effort to be with us today. Just over six weeks ago, we set out to find the next leader of our Department of Athletics, someone with experience, vision, and integrity to lead us successfully into what is a complicated but exciting new era of college athletics. 
and after engaging with several exceptional candidates, we found that proven national leader, our next athletic director, Alan Green. Alan comes to fit with incredible experience at the Power Five and Group of Five levels. He served as the director of athletics at both Auburn University and the University of Buffalo. He's held senior administrative roles at the University of Tennessee, the University of Mississippi, the University of Buffalo, and at his alma mater, the University of Notre Dame, where Alan was a baseball letter winner. Throughout my conversation with university leaders, directors of athletics, and others within higher education, it was very clear the esteem with which Ellen was held, his work ethic, his ability to prioritize the student athlete, and his ability to identify and secure traditional and innovative revenue. But in my conversations with Alan, it also became clear that we had a shared vision, shared values, and a shared commitment to excellence. He recognized what a special place Pittsburgh is and what a special place the University of Pittsburgh is. And he sees the potential of our athletics program. He sees our legacy. He sees how we can win in the ACC. He sees how we can win nationally. And he sees how we can graduate our amazing student athletes and do so fiscally responsibly, but as part of a world-class university. And we're really fortunate to have Alan join our family here at the university, but we're even luckier to have his wife, Christy, and their children, Ryan, Sammy, and Seneca, wear the blue and gold. So I say to you all today, hail to possible, hail to Pitt, and hail to our new athletic director, Alan Green, who it is my pleasure to introduce to all of you today. Alan. So why Pitt? 
I, I got that question asked a lot of me recently of why Pitt, and I think there are so many different reasons why Pitt makes perfect sense. Uh, I had a chance to talk to our coaches, our head coaches earlier today um, on a press conference, and they are why Pitt. I had a chance to talk to uh, some of our donors who support this university, support this athletics department. They are why Pitt. Uh, I had a chance to learn about the industrial history of this wonderful city, about the progressive nature, not just now, but 100 years ago, when you think about steel, you think about how to shape our country and shape our world, why Pitt? That is why, when you think about education, when you think about healthcare, when you think about innovation and technology, that is why Pitt. I think about this humble community, I think about uh, this down-to-earth community, I think about how genuine people are. That is why Pitt. Incredibly unpretentious, incredibly proud. That is why Pitt. The importance of education, the importance of athletics, finding a way to do both of those in a very excellent way, this being an AAU institution, that is why Pitt. And maybe most importantly for me at this stage of my career is leadership. Wanting to make sure that I have a leader and a colleague and the chancellor and in the board of trustees for a week and make sure that we are aligned to do whatever we can that is in the best interest of the University of Pittsburgh. Athletics is simply sits under the umbrella of the entire university. And our job is to make sure that we elevate the brand, make sure that people, as I told our coaches today, respect Pitt the way that we deserve to be respected, that we market Pitt, that the brand deserves to be at the upper echelon of higher education in this country. Those are the reasons why Pitt is it. Our guiding principles, there's three main ones. At athletic excellence, academic success, and social preparedness. Those are the overarching principles of what we do. We want to make sure that our kids achieve in the classroom, achieve on the field of courts of play, and perhaps most importantly, achieve in life. At the end of the day, we are educators. While they may have a coach title, while may I have an athletic director title, and there may be other titles sprinkled throughout, we are all here to educate young people and to prepare them for the rigors of tomorrow. Our core values are going to start with our student athletes, and they're going to end with championships. It's important that we pour ourselves into our 500 plus student athletes, and that we provide them every resource we possibly can, and commit ourselves to them. In some cases, we commit ourselves to them more than we commit ourselves to our own families to make sure that they are successful. That is going to be the very first tenet of our core values. Secondly, is do so with integrity. Integrity is when you do the right thing when no one is watching. Do you pick up a piece of trash when no one is watching? Do you hold the door open when no one is watching? Do you do the right thing, no matter how inconvenient it is for you? We want to make sure that everything we do every day is full of integrity. We know that people are important, whether you're in college athletics or whether you're running a Fortune 500 company. You cannot have success without having the right people, without having a tremendous culture. And as I look and see people from the athletics department who are here today, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help make you better and better and better each and every day. That is my commitment to you. And I want that to be your commitment to everyone else who's working in this athletics department and who is working at this university. We want to do so in a very innovative way. As I mentioned to our coaches this morning, we want to take calculated risks. Now is not a time to sit back and to put our feet up on the table and see what's happening in the world. We don't want to react. We want to be proactive. We want to find a way to best position ourselves. Those calculated risks are exactly that. We may not be perfect. We may make mistakes. We may make a poor decision, but we're going to make decisions. We're going to execute them in, uh, in, a, in an appropriate manner. I was once read um, a line from a CEO. And they said, don't worry about making the right decision. We worry about making the decision right. We are going to commit ourselves to making not just right decisions, but also making our decisions right. We want to make sure we have an inclusive environment. 
one where someone can be them their whole self. I told the chancellor when she asked about it, one of the things I led with was it says right there when you, when you Google search University of Pittsburgh, it talks about the diverse and inclusive environment where people can bring them full selves to our campus and our community. You can't be fully successful unless you are comfortable in your own skin and can bring your full self to work each and every day. And lastly, I hate losing more than I like winning. I'm gonna say it again because it's important. I hate losing more than I like winning. We want to be successful. We commit ourselves to being successful. We want to win championships, both conference and national. And for those people who say it's not possible, go cheer for a different school. It is possible at Pitt, and we want to work hard every day to prove it. I look forward to working with our coaches and our student athletes, to our staff and our community, to develop a vision and a strategy that's going to help us achieve these things and do so in a way that's going to make the Pitt community proud. Or proud. You know, it's interesting as we've talked about the changing landscape of college athletics, it's hard to understand where the heck we're going. We don't know. And as I said before, what may be true on a Monday is not true on a Friday. So it's our responsibility to look around the corner sooner and further than others. It's also our responsibility to act. I look forward to doing all those things with the Pitt community. A wise man once said, Pittsburgh entered the core of my heart when I was a boy and cannot be torn out. Those are the words of Andrew Kearney. I certainly hope that over our, during our time here, my family's time here in Oakland and the community of Pittsburgh, that you have a hell of a hard time ripping Pittsburgh out of our hearts. Thank you. We held a pit. I spoke on the phone before you got here. What has been the biggest thing that you've learned since your arrival here at Pitt about the team that you're working with? You talked about the coaches and the impressions they left. What are some of the things that you've learned from guys like Pat Narduzzi, Jeff Capel, Dan Fisher, et cetera? The fact that I just met them and the fact that I love them and will work my tail off for them says all I need to say. And they're an awesome group of individuals and I can't wait to get to work. Uh, Chancellor Dominic Campbell with uh, Pittsburgh Panthers on his side. What was the moment you knew Alan was the person to be the next director of athletics at the University of Pittsburgh? I think that the first time we, he answered the question, why Pitt? And he really answered it essentially the same way you just heard. Uh, the idea of how he intersected his personal experience and growth along his professional journey with what he already knew about the city and the university um, aligned directly with the advice that we received from the committee that he wanted excellence in a way that completely aligned with our values and I thought we have our next director right here. Excuse me, Jerry DePaul, Pittsburgh Tribune Review for Allen. Um, I'm just curious, in this new age of, of college athletics with NIL and transfer portal, why do you think that Pitt can not only survive among all the turmoil, I guess is the right word, uh, but also thrive among all that turmoil? Yeah, I think it's the interest of, uh, this is a sports city, right? And there's no more pride in, in many cities like this. And I think the Pitt community will answer the bell when we talk to them about the importance of talent acquisition, particularly through NIL. And as this world changes, we're going to continue to educate our folks in the community and help, help them buy in to our overall vision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Chris Carter, Post Gazette again. Uh, and this one's for both Alan and Joan. And I guess John as well, if you should change the chime in. But you talked about being proactive, Alan, and finding you know innovative ways to go about the business of, of athletics in this world that changes from Monday to Tuesday, let alone Monday to Friday. What are things that Pitt can do that can get ahead of the game or do things that other schools aren't doing to try to be proactive in, in, in the college athletics world? Now, Chris, if I told you what we were going to do, you think I would do that publicly? <laughs> Come on. 
We got the University of Tennessee sitting right here. I'm not going to lie to you. In fact, I'm going to sit in some meetings next week in Tennessee. Um, no, honestly, look, we, we, are going, we are going to have our conversations. It's really important for me to understand what's important to our coaches and then work to develop a strategy around it. Alan, Jeff Hathorne from Odyssey Pittsburgh. Uh, what is your role in helping the coaches and their staffs to win? Yeah, Jeff, thank you. Nice to meet you. The first thing I said, well, number one, it was hello, good morning. The second thing I said to them was, get something to eat. And the third thing I said to them was, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help make sure that they have what's necessary in order for them to be competitive. Alan, George Michalowski of Pittsburgh Sports Now. Being in the SEC uh, for your past few positions, what is your perspective on the current state and the future state of the ACC? Oh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, that's an excellent question. I don't know that I have enough information fully, right? We, we, I've been involved in conversations regarding the Southeastern Conference, and I look forward to getting better acquainted with the, the, the dynamics in, uh, in the Atlantic Coast Conference. John Hunter, WBXI. Uh, welcome, Alan. This question is for you. You and Chancellor Gable both mentioned, you know, this shared vision that you have. What are some of the big parts, components of that vision? Yeah, that's a great question. Jenna, Jenna, is that right? Yeah, nice nice to see you. Thank you for that question. It really comes down to excellence, right? And excellence in athletics and excellence with the academy and making sure that we're doing our part to fulfill uh, Chancellor Gable's mission for the University of Pittsburgh. because this is a university with rich history, both athletically and academically. Um, it aligns with our values as a family. Um, my kids know that, well, through my wife, that is not me. She's a single mother. Uh, but my, my, kids, my kids know how important academics is, and they also know that athletics is a part of our life as well. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a perfect fit, in my opinion. And Jerry Paul, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Alan, as a former collegiate athlete, how do you wrap your head around NIL players can, student athletes can pay, student athletes being able to transfer and play immediately, which was something that maybe five to ten years ago people would have thought absolutely outrageous. Well, when I was an athlete, I don't even remember when I was an athlete, so that's, it's a very different day and age. Look, you have to understand that. The world, the world changes and the world evolves. And in order for us to fulfill our responsibility to our young people, we have to accept that it's a new world and do whatever we can to help make sure they're successful in it. Thank you. Uh, both, both for Alan and There's, there's two other people up here, right? I know. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I said John's, John's name. name. I'm the only person to say John's name. Hold on now. Um, <laughs> but this is for, for all three. Alan's experience, you've been in 80 at two places. Uh, from the start of your time at Buffalo to the end of the time at Buffalo, you almost doubled the amount of donor uh, uh, donor donations that uh, Buffalo got in, in a year from the start to your finish. And then at Auburn, you withstood COVID-19 when the whole country saw it, dip, saw it rebound and still got more uh, donor donations to the athletic department at Auburn uh, from the time that you ended the time there, from the time that you began. What about, you know, what about the Pitts donor base convinces you all, as you all have built your relationships, of course, John and John, longer time to do so, but what about your connection with the Pitt donor base suggests that you, know, you guys can have similar or even more success here at Pitt? It's uh, off, any, anyone who wants to take it. Well, I, you know, I will say this. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me help the two of them out. <laughs> Absolutely. No, um, Pittsburgh has a rich history of demonstrating mm -hmm. that it takes care of its own. Mm -hmm. And it supports its own. This community has consistently found its way through the challenges that we've all faced, and they've been uh, varied over time. And uh, we're confident 
that Pittsburgh is in support of the University of Pittsburgh in this athletic program that we've demonstrated. Sue Jones from the University of Times here at the University. Um, with all of the NIL and students being paid, how do you keep their focus on being students, not just athletes? I think that speaks to who we are as a university and the job that our coaches do in selling the University of Pittsburgh. It, this is not professional sports, right? So I think we have to separate the fact that student athletes getting paid versus professional sport, this is not. This is an institution of higher learning. Uh, this is the only place in the world where athletics is tethered to the academy. And so long as that is the case, we are going to make sure that academics is an emphasis and recruit the type of kids who understand and their families understand that academics is, it plays an integral role in their personal development. Uh, Chris Peek from Candelaire.com. Alan, you talked about being proactive. You need to have obviously vision of what's coming in college sports are kind of all over the place right now. When you think about where it was five years ago compared to today, it's night and day. So, first of all, what does college sports look like five years from now? I don't know what it looks like tomorrow. I'm, I'm just trying to get through the day. Um, it's going to be different. That's all, that's all we know. There, there's, there's so many things happening in our ecosystem and it's, it's too difficult to predict what's going to happen so we have to take the information that we know and that we have and, and try to make prudent decisions and set um, great strategy around those things going forward and be prepared to adjust and adapt when necessary. Alan, what are the first 30 days or so like as far as assessing facilities and personnel and things like that? Um, I, I did find out where I'm supposed to park, so I guess I'm going to say that's an important thing, so you know, check that one off the box. But listen, it, it's going to be about learning, and I'll be, there's a reason why you have two ears and one room on now, uh, and two eyes, right? So I'm going to watch, I'm going to listen, I'm going to try not to speak too much. After today, like, I'm going to be quiet and just ask questions uh, and really learn, and then once we have a decent idea of what we're trying to accomplish, and once I get acclimated, then we can start to try to implement some things. But the next, the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, it's going to be about reaching out to folks in the community, understanding it from a community perspective, from an athletic perspective, and then working to try to put pencil and paper to figure out how we can uh, use our uniquenesses to our advantage. Andrew Stocky, WTAE TV here in Pittsburgh. Uh, Alan, welcome to Pittsburgh. Uh, this question is for Chancellor Gable. Uh, what is the statement being made in bringing Alan in this change from one athletic administration, which had success and is currently having success, to this new administration of athletics here at the University of Pittsburgh? I think that, uh, as Alan mentioned in his remarks, there's really no question of the success that the previous administration had. And we've acknowledged that um, at every opportunity and with appreciation. Uh, the times in which um, we find ourselves require a different approach. And when we engaged in our search and sought advice from the committee, we um, sought a skill set that aligned with where things were moving to, sort of along the lines of the Wayne Gretzky quote of looking to where the puck was going to be. And um, so we uh, pursued a set of skills that aligned with the way in which things are moving. Um, I think your questions today reflect where things are moving, but also with a, a very close tie to what our community needs, what our department needs, and what our university needs, and most importantly, what our coaches and athletes need. And I think that's exactly what we have with us now, both in Alan Green and with his family, and that is something that's very exciting for all of us. Uh, Joan, uh, just curious, it's, it was just a little, a little under six weeks um, for this hiring process. Can you give us any insight on, you know, was that the timeline you were hoping for, and did it faster or slower than you, you wish, or just any kind of insight into the, uh, the hiring process? So we actually very intentionally did set a deadline, um, as you all probably noticed, so that we could uh, pace ourselves according to how we were able to work through the availability of candidates. Um, 
given that we were in the middle of the season. Um, so we were very pleased with the outcome and the timing just was what it was. Uh, Joan, considering the House settlement that's coming, the, uh, um, the, the rising importance of NIL in this search process, where was the priori- what was the priority placed on finding someone who can specialize in both finding financial resources and innovative ways to get to those resources to pit, to help overcome those upcoming obstacles? Well, an overall sense of um, financial acumen um, was very high priority, but not at the expense of the culture of the department or the alignment with century students or being able to find the competitiveness and the nature of being within a world-class university. It's a portfolio set of skills, but yes, of course, it was a priority for our next athletic director of that question. Uh, Alan, <clears throat> excuse me, this may, may seem like a strange question, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> Get him, <Jerry>. how, <laughs> how, how difficult is it, Alan, to ask pe- people for money, and not just money, but large sums of money, and why are you good at it? I'm going to answer that question the way I would answer it to someone who's not worked in fundraising before. Like someone who's starting off in this industry and said, I don't ask for money. Never have. I, I explain the vision, express the vision, and let people enjoy the journey along with that vision. I love this question. It's for Joan. Obviously, you said the campus really built for the developers like Future Defense Center was our very good stadium, so I'm showing my age. So the season of elementary, the issue of baseball, softball, soccer fields. And then now, you, now we're seeing the uh, development of the Victory Heights. What's your thoughts on how things are just continuing to develop for the athletic department for this university? I'm sorry, can you hear the last part of the question? Um, your thoughts on just the continued development for the athletics of this university? Oh, I mean, the, as I consistently said, I consider athletics the front porch of the institution. It is often the primary way in which many of our stakeholders, either across campus or in the region, nationally, these days, internationally, across different platforms, engage with the institution. It's often the way we bring alums back. It's often the first way in which someone learns about us, feels their connection to the institution. Um, Our student athletes are, um, in addition to being students in the classroom, are in many ways our ambassador. They put a lot is asked of them, and we um, thank them for it and and support them for it. And our coaches um, do so much more than ask our students to compete on the court or in the field. It's a a very three-dimensional thing to be involved in athletics especially these days especially with the way in which the ground is shifting and so for us to think about how that front porch is changing the pace of change the expectations for how it's changing um, is is a very big part of the overall strategy of the institution it's part of our excellence Um, it's a, a i every president and chancellor sits on the board of their athletic conference it's a big part of what we do. This is a world-class university. We want to be world-class competitors, and we want to be excellent as much in competition as we do in research, as we do in the graduation rates of our students, as we do in everything that we do. If we could take one final question, and then we'll transition to our photo opportunity here on the stage. And again, to remind you, Alan will be available at the side at the conclusion of the photos. Stephen, you have the last one. Uh, Alan, Stephen Thompson, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Uh, both you and Joan talked about being innovative, especially with regards to how to generate revenue. Can you speak to anything specific that you've done in your past that has been innovative in terms of, of generating revenue? Yeah, I see those questions, Stephen. Nice to see you. You know, I think it's about working to try to find ways to unlock additional opportunities, and whether that's through uh, what we call prior to seeing the ticket donations or through business development. And um, one of the things that's going to be really exciting to do is to learn uh, about what we've done here at the University of Pittsburgh, what our, what our um, advantages are, and then really work to unlock those.